Hello everyone and welcome to my first Blender game video tutorial series part 6.5. In this part we are going to create, to rig, to skin and to animate an armature for the Blender game engine. Now not that, note that this tutorial will only be a short overview tutorial because these subjects are really deep and there is a lot of stuff to, stay, to say about it and I will link some great in-depth tutorial in the video description below if you want more detail, but think of this tutorial as a quick sum up. Now before we start, I want to show you my splash screen, just so you know that I'm using Blender 2.6 revision 42137. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to recreate this armature that we have used in part 6. So in order to do that, I will have to press, oh, first of all, let me print my screencast key and I'll use a font of 30, mouse of 80. Here we go. Great. So first of all, we will have to create an armature by pressing Shift A, selecting Armature, Single Bone. Now, you can see that doing this created, created us a bone, but you have to understand that this bone is not the armature. It is, it is only a part of it. And you can see that if I go in edit mode by pressing the tab button, then if I press the N button to open my menu and other item, you have the name of the armature and the name of the bone. And if I press E to extrude another bone from this bone, you can see that we now have bone.002, bone.001, and bone that are all part of the same armature. Now, in the edit mode of an armature, it is working differently from the edit mode of any other mesh object that you were used to work with. However, most of the tools still work in a similar way. For instance, the E key for extrude work as it would work normally in the, in the normal view. You can subdivide a bone the same way you would do in the standard edit mode. You can shift D to create a copy. You can parent by pressing Ctrl P. And you can unparent by pressing Alt P. Parenting don't seem to do any difference uh, while in edit mode, as you can see, since I can move this bone without him following it following. However, if we go in pause mode, that is the mode using for animations, you can see that the parenting does make a, an effect. Okay, so that's how to create bone in a nutshell. Let us recreate this armature that we have here. So to do that, I'll press Z to enter in wireframe view, grab my bone and drag it where my other bone was. Shift D to duplicate it, Rotate, oops, rotate 90 degrees, grab, scale down the x axis, move it, shift D to create a copy, move it out the other way. And if you rem remember correctly, we had this controller bone here, and I do it, and I'll do it by pressing shift D. Rotate it 90 degrees, and instead of scaling, I will drag this top here and I will put it down. Now, at this point, you should have noticed two things. The first one is that we have some kind of pyramid object instead of cubes, and we have, and uh, the scaling of this object go down as we drag it up and down. And to fix that, to change that, in fact, we will go to this armature button here, panel, and under display, we have all these options, octahedron, stick, b-bone, envelope, wire, and this is it. This is it. Now, the one we want to use is, is b-bone, and I use it as a prefer personal preference. However, b-bone has a unique ability that is to scale the object um, only for the size without affecting the skinning, and we will talk about the skinning later. 
and you can do that by pressing Ctrl Alt S and you make the bone more visible. Here we go. Now you have to understand that this is only working for B bone. As you can see, if I switch between the other side, the other style types, yeah, types. If the other types. And the last thing we need to do to recreate the armature we had in part six is to select all our bone, then our controller bone. Hmm, controller bone must be centered like this. All our bone. Then our controller bone. And finally, the controller bone. Press Ctrl P to parent it, and we want to keep offset. So that when we go in pose mode, we can move all the armature by moving only one bone. Now, I'll go back to edit mode, and at this point, since we have a complete copy of what we had in part 6, I will only delete it and work with the original we had in the part 6. So, this was how to create an armature. Now we need to know how to skin it. Now, what is the skinning? Well, skinning is telling each vertex what bone it should follow. And you can see that if I go in edit mode, then grab this bone and move it this way, you can see that these vertex here, the two vertex that are here, are following the bone that I'm dragging, but they are also following this bone right here, so they are not completely moving like the other, the other vertex on this feet. And at this point, I will press Ctrl, right up arrow, to make my screen go bigger, go bigger, and and now in order to fix that, to our, in order to fix the fact that these vertex are not following the bone as we want, we need to go in wake painting mode. And to do that, we need to select our character and press Ctrl Tab arrow to go in wake painting mode. Or we can simply press this button and select it. In this mode, you can see that. Sorry. You can see that when I select different bones, the colors on my object change. And what the color represents is the number, the percentage, or vertex are influenced by the bone. The more reddish is the color of the vertex, the more the vertex will be influenced. The more blue is the, cl the color of the vertex, the less it will be influenced. So as you can see, if I move this object, nothing is influenced except the feet. However, if I press on this one, you can see that these vertex are some kind of blue, so they are not completely affected by this bone. And we want to fix that as we want to make them completely red. And to do that, we need to press the T key to make a, our brush tool appear. And in the brush tool, we have multiple tabs, but the only one we want to focus on is the brush one. And in the brush one, we have this big button here that let us select what kind of brush we want and we will use draw as it will work correctly for, for us for this tutorial. We have the weight here that indicate what color we want to paint on our object. A weight of 1 is completely red, a weight of 0 is completely blue. And you can see that if I start painting on my object that I am moving the vertex accordingly to this bone. And on the opposite, if I put a weight of 0, and start painting on this bone. Well, this might not be the better example. Oh, here, I have the idea. If I start painting on there, then I put a weight of zero and start of painting back, you can see that it removes colors. Auto normalize and multi paint are options that we won't talk in this tutorial. The radius is only the radius of your brush. The strength is is the power of your brush. The more the strength is high, the more you will put the weight, and the lesser, the less influence you will have. So, for example, 
if I paint with a weight of a strength of one and a weight of one, we will go to instant red or almost. But if I start to paint with a weight of 0.3, we will only go to a light blue because our strength is lower. And we won't talk about the jitter either. So at this point, we want to paint in red this point, this vertex for this bone. So I'll take a weight of 1, a strength of 1, and I'll start painting on them. Oops. And at this point it might be hard to see where are your vertex, so what you can do, you can press the Z key and you will have a better vision of what is going on. And, and now, as you can see, even if my object is completely painted red, we still have this ugly deformation here. And to fix that, we need to select this bone, because this, as you can see, this bone is affecting this vertex also. And we want to make this vertex blue, because we don't want this bone to affect this vertex, so we'll select a weight of 0, and we'll start, we'll start to paint. I think the, rate, the right term is vertices. Yeah, probably. And everything seems correct to me. And now that it is done, we can select our bone, start moving, and as you can see, everything is moving correctly. So I'll press Alt-G to nullify the, the grab, and you can do the same shortcut for the rotation, Alt-R, or the size, Alt-S. And now our object is correctly skinned. And I'll return in my and I'll return in my original display because we now want to animate this object. And I'll try to select my armature. And here it is. Go in edit mode, pose mode. And we can start to animate. Now, we have already do this, so I'll just repeat it shortly. To animate, you need to go in your dough sheet, create a new action by pressing this button, name it as you want, I'll name it tap, select a bone, go to the frame you want the uh, animation to be, and insert, make the change, insert the keyframe. Go to the frame, make the change, insert keyframe, and go to the frame, make the change, insert keyframe. And now you can see that if I press Alt-A, we have a short animation of our feet tapping. And this animation is called tap, and we can use it in the action actuator of the game engine. So, that was all for this short tutorial, summing up how to create an armature, how to skin it, and how to animate it. So I hope you have enjoyed this video, that you have learned something from it. I wish you a great day, and I'll see you in part 7.